Well, with me is Rafe Heidel Manku, a ceremonial commentator who was broadcasting from outside St. Paul's Cathedral earlier today. Rafe, this wasn't a state funeral, but to the untrained eye, it could have been. Just explain to us the difference. There are very few differences, actually, between a ceremonial and a state funeral. Um, a state funeral requires a vote or a motion in, in Parliament to, to be put through. Um, there is a slight difference in the number of gun salutes that are fired. Uh, uh, and most significantly, I suppose, uh, the gun carriage upon which the coffin is borne is drawn by horses, as we saw today in a ceremonial funeral, but in a state funeral is actually pulled by uh, members of the Royal Navy. This dates back to Queen Victoria's reign when the horses bolted on the icy streets and the Navy had to stand in. So to the untrained eye, not much of a difference, really. And you were there, of course, you were broadcasting from outside St Paul's. What was the atmosphere like? Because, of course, she was incredibly divisive. Well, following on from all the protests, what was remarkable was the lack of protest on this occasion. And certainly there were a few hecklers, but uh, what I found in the crowd was each time there was a heckle, the crowd resoundingly turned and, and booed them down. And it almost seemed as if people were there to pay uh, respects and uh, to, to show their gratitude to uh, what really was the, you know, the, the longest prime minister that we've had for 150 years and the first woman prime minister. And so we saw a round of applause, something which we weren't so, so used to long ago, but after the funeral of Diana, something which we now associate with funerals in this country. And Lady Thatcher was very much involved in deciding what to have in her service. She was very much in control of it. There wasn't, for example, a fly past. It's true. Um, people like Lord Prescott have said that this is uh, the Tory party trying to canonise Thatcher, but actually the plans were laid in place during the Labour government uh, and Thatcher was very much involved with that and being a cost-cutting Prime Minister, she was very keen to ensure that the public purse wasn't uh, over overflowing when it comes to this, so there was no fly path, no lying in state. So a ceremonial funeral, uh, much more restrained and reduced than that of the state funeral of Winston Churchill, but a very fitting way to, to celebrate this tremendous woman. And only the second politician, as you touched upon there, Winston Churchill, after Winston Churchill, to have such a grand funeral. Is, is that right? Well, there's an argument to be had as to whether uh, Thatcher was the greatest peacetime leader. Some people might put Attlee forward. But I think at the end of the day, the real test is to see whether one has uh, the charisma to make a mark upon history. And I would argue that only Churchill, other than, than Thatcher, was a person who straddled the global stage, not just the British stage. And it's really the, the, the force of personality and the charisma of a person that ensures that they're going to make a mark in the public mind. And Thatcher definitely did that, whatever one's view of her. Fascinating stuff. Rafe Hale-Manker, thank you very much for explaining all of that to us. Thank you.